Hi there and welcome to Real Yoga. I'm Hannah and this is Felix and today's practice will be working on stretching through the inner thigh muscles or the adductor muscles. So for the practice today I highly recommend bringing a blanket or a towel, a, like a large towel would also work really well. So grab something like that if it's around your home or your space, get into your stretchy pants and we'll meet you on the mat. So today we'll begin in Malasana or Yogi Squat Pose. So generally what happens with a lot of people in a squat is that they can't quite get their heels down to flat on the floor and that's super super normal, it's no problem, but it can be uncomfortable. So whether you can or can't get your heels down, everyone grab your blanket now and then what we want to do here is make a little roll with your blanket, it can be as like thick or thin as you like it. And what we're going to use is this roll to kind of lift those heels and support the heels underneath us. So make your roll as big or as small as you need. And then step the heels of your feet onto your roll. Point your toes out to 45 degrees and your legs can be as wide as feels comfortable. And then start to bend your knees as you sink down into your squat. And here you can adjust your feet as you require. So I might walk mine in just a little. And then choose here either to keep your hands down for balance. But if already you want to start working into stretching through these adductor muscles, your inner thigh muscles, then take your elbows to the insides of your knees, bring your hands together, and then as you send your hands towards your heart, your elbows should start to open your legs out to the side. Great. All right, so here, again, what can be very common is that your back starts to round. So try as best as you can to start to lift the crown of your head towards the sky and try and find some length in your spine here. And you're gonna have to use your belly muscles and your strong glutes to keep you lifted. All right, we're going to stay here for a little bit, already starting to warm up and get some action happening in these muscles. So if it feels comfortable for you, then feel free to close down your eyes. And so here we're pressing our elbows into our knees. And if you wanna up the game even more, you can start to press your knees or squeeze your knees back into your arms. So we've got these opposing motions. And when you squeeze your knees into your arms, you'll straight away feel those inner thigh muscles fire up. That's a good thing, we want that. So if you're squeezing, keep actively pressing your arms and legs towards one another, resisting each other. For five, for four, three, two, and on the one, release the squeeze. Maybe you even open your eyes here. And notice if that helped you to sit a little more comfortably in this pose. Maybe it didn't, and that's totally fine. Beautiful. We'll be here for a few more breaths. Breathing deep, continuing to lengthen the crown of our head, trying to get long through the back of our body. Beautiful, one more inhale. And then exhale. From here, really press down into your feet and we're gonna to start to engage the leg muscles to lift us all the way up to standing. Release your hands by your sides. Great. All right, from here, you can kick your little blanket off to the side. We'll come back to use that again a bit later and we'll meet together at the top of the mat. Take your feet as wide as your hip bones, and then we're gonna really try and elevate our Tadasana today. So imagine that you've got little dot stickers underneath your feet, and there's one underneath your big toe mound, one underneath your pinky toe mound, and one on the base of your heel. So imagine those babies are underneath your feet, and you wanna press into those three points. Beautiful. It's really grounding down through your feet. So using that, that support of the earth, we're gonna to start to lift up actively through the rest of our body. So grounding down through those three, three points, start to lift up from the arches of the feet and feel that lift travel up your legs into your kneecaps. Engage your quad muscles so your legs are solid here. And then think about pointing your sit bones very slightly down towards the earth. And what you'll notice that did 
particularly for me, is as I point my sit bones down, my low belly starts to hug in. So start to draw your low belly, low ribs in. And then on your next inhale, can you lift up through your chest? Maybe you lift your shoulders to your ears and then exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together. So first we're really gonna exaggerate this lift up in the chest. Keep containing your low belly, your low ribs. Beautiful. One more inhale breath here. Squeeze your shoulder blades, open your heart. And then as you exhale, can you relax your shoulders and let them soften out to the side? So you've got this nice broad chest. And then finally, very slightly pull your chin in towards your throat so that the back of your neck is long and your skull lifts up to the sky. So here we are in Tadasana, our mountain pose. All right, when you're ready, we're gonna get flowing. Bend your knees, send your fingertips down to come up, big breath in, stretch through the sides of your body, and then exhale, cascade it down, forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need, let your head and neck just hang out here. On an inhale, lengthen halfway. You can bring your hands to your shins or your thighs. Draw your belly in as you reach your heart forward. And then exhale again to fold it down. Two more like that. Inhale to lengthen. Beautiful. Roll your shoulders away from your ears. One more breath. Exhale to fold. And then last one. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Gaze is straight down so the back of your neck is still nice and long. And here, can you shift a tiny bit more weight into your toes, activating those hamstring muscles? One more inhale. Exhale, melt it down, press into your hands, and step, step back into your first downward facing dog. We're not going to stay here super long, but make sure that your fingers are spread really wide and your feet are hips width distance apart. On your next inhale, roll it forward, come into plank pose. Nice. Exhale, straight away, come to your knees, untuck your toes. Keep pressing the mat away from you. Feel your front body lift up to meet your back body. Keep all of that action. Take an inhale breath. And as you exhale, bend your elbows directly behind you as you lower down softly. Nice. Shoulders roll back. Inhale to lift your head and your heart. Squeeze your elbows towards one another. Really press down into the tops of your feet here for one more breath in. And then exhale, melt it down, tuck your toes. Press into your hands and send your hips up high and back, down and facing dog. Lovely. Alrighty. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, let it go. We're going to start on the opposite side this time. So walk your big toes to touch. And inhale, send your left leg straight up and back, three-legged dog. Exhale, stay here. Can you start to engage the muscles of your left leg squeezing your glute, pointing your foot, but spreading your toes, and then lift that leg even higher. Full breath in, and then exhale, squeeze your knee towards your nose, push the mat away from you, look at all the space you've created to step your foot silently in between your hands, or you can help it there if you didn't make it. All right, pivot your back heel down, and then we're gonna sweep our arms up and come into our first warrior two. Nice. All right, so in your warrior two, bend deeply through the front knee. Have a quick look and make sure you can see your big toe. Nice. And then at the same time, can you press down strongly through the outer edge of your back foot, your back leg, and really push down so your legs are super strong. And then from there, to make sure you're not dumping into those strong legs, squeeze your glutes as a reminder to lift up from your pelvic floor so your chest and your belly is lifted. Nice. Reach your fingertips away from your shoulders. Take an inhale. And then exhale, relax your shoulders. Pull your pinkies back. Nice. And some teachers will tell you to look towards your front middle finger, but I think you can look wherever it makes your head and neck feel happy. All right. From here, flip your front hand, palm faces up. And then inhale, reach the left arm to the sky as you lean back. Reverse your warrior. Legs stay exactly the same. Take an inhale. Exhale, legs don't change. We're coming back to warrior two. I know your legs are on fire, mine too. On your next inhale, straighten through your front leg. Oh, thank goodness. Pop your right hip out to the side. And now reach through your left fingertips. 
get long through the sides of your body, and then simply drop your left hand towards your leg or the floor and reach your right arm to the sky for triangle pose. Nice. Again here, activate through the feet. So draw up through your inner thigh muscles even here. And to test that you're not just dumping the top of your body into your bottom leg, can you release your hand from the floor or your leg and let it just kind of tick-tock back and forth? So for all those kids that think TikTok is just an app, they're based off of an actual clock. <laughs> Showing my age. All right, squeeze your thighs together. Use that as you inhale, come up with straight legs. Nice. Flip your front hand, and then again, lean back, reverse trikonasana, reverse triangle. Inhale, lift your chest away from your hips. And then exhale, start to come forward as you bend your front knee, bring your left forearm to your left thigh, reach your right arm by your right ear. Sweet. We're again, we're pressing down super strongly into both feet. And again, if you want to test that those legs are working, reach that left hand forward like you're serving drinks on a tray. <sighs> Squeeze your glutes. Smile, it's not so hard. Well, it is so hard. <laughs> One more breath in. And then exhale, take both hands down, pivot on your back foot and step back to plank. You can stay lifted or come down to your knees. Take an inhale. Exhale, lowering all the way to your belly. Inhale, shoulders roll back, toes are untucked. As you lift up, find cobra. Squeeze your elbows together. And then exhale, float it down. Tuck your toes and press yourself back into downward facing dog. Nice, we'll take a couple of breaths here. Child's pose is also very welcome. Okay, other side. From here, again, walk your big toes to touch. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale to stay. Engage your right glute, flex your feet. As you inhale, lift that leg even higher. And now can you press more into your right palm and bring your left heel closer to the earth. One more breath in, can you lift that leg even higher? And then exhale, squeeze your knee to your nose, push the mat away from you and step your foot in between your hands. Lovely, back heel pivots down. And again, we make our way up into warrior two. I'm gonna flip myself on the mat here, just so you don't get the back of me for the next five minutes or so. All right, same deal here on this side. So front knee is deeply bent. We're, uh, we're pressing into that front foot, but we're equally pressing down into our back leg and back foot and really activating our foundation. And again, I really love to squeeze my glutes as that reminder to lift my top body away from my legs. Good. Reach your fingertips away, take an inhale. Exhale, relax your shoulders. <sighs> Pull those pinkies back. Keep your heart nice and open. Alrighty. If you like, you can bend a little deeper or not. <laughs> no prizes in yoga. And then flip your front hand. As you inhale, lean it back. Reverse your warrior. Legs stay as they are. Keep squeezing the glutes to lift your heart. Take an inhale. And then exhale, come back to warrior two. Nice work. Next inhale. Straighten through your right leg. Pop your left hip behind you. Reach forward through your right arm. And when you can't reach anymore, simply flip your hands. Roll your top shoulder back. And then here, can you gently pump your hip forward so you get this nice stretch across the front of your left hip. Sweet. And again, notice if you're really gripping, you're holding a lot into that bottom arm. Can you release it? Feel your core and your legs, your inner thighs especially, have to work much harder. <laughs> nice. We're here for one more inhale. Exhale, start to squeeze your legs, draw your belly in, keep that, and inhale to come up with straight legs. Beautiful. Flip your front palm. On your next inhale breath, lean it back, reverse triangle. Full breath in, and exhale. Bring it on down to extended side angle. So your right knee bends, right elbow rests on your right thigh, reaching your left fingertips away. At the same time, we're still pressing strongly through the outer edge of our left foot. Good. Squeeze your glutes. Use them so that you can reach that right hand forward. 
No change in the legs here. Maybe a little change everywhere else. <laughs> One more breath in. And then exhale, take both hands down, pivot on your back foot. And again, you can step it back, downward facing dog. Option to take a vinyasa here if you would like. I'm just gonna shift myself back to the top of the mat. Beautiful. From your downward dog, that's where we're gonna meet. Bring your big toes to touch once again. This time, bend your knees out to either side of your yoga mat as you bounce your hips up and down like you're a pouncy kitty cat. Look in between your hands and see if you can hop yourself forward and come into Malasana, a little yogi squat pose. My mat went on a little sliding vacation there. It's all good. <laughs> Once again, bring your hands together at your heart and use that action to lift your spine, lift the crown of your head. Beautiful. You can close down your eyes for a beat here if it feels nice. One more inhale. One more exhale. From here, take your hands behind you and come to look all the way down onto your butt. Take your knees with you. We're coming all the way down onto our backs. Yay. You can give yourself a little rock and roll here if you prefer. Nice. All right. From here, we're going to take the left foot down flat on the mat. And we're going to extend the right leg to the sky. So straight away, this leg doesn't have to be straight, it can be bent. What's important here is that our foot is super flexed. So point your toes down towards your nose and press the heel of your foot up to the sky. Now spread your toes wide and rotate your foot 45 degrees to the right. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. And here you can simply start to press the right knee away from you and your left hand can just rest on your hip. This is a happy place to live, especially if your hips are super tight. If you want a little more, you can start to float your left foot off of the mat, interlace your hands behind your left knee, and then start to squeeze your left knee towards you as you press your right knee away from you. You might even be able to use your elbow for that action. And did your right foot fall asleep? Try to make sure to keep that baby active because the if our foot is flexed, we're protecting our knee joint, and that's super important. Your left foot, though, can just be hanging out. It's all good. All right, we'll take a few beats here. Try and relax your head, your shoulders. Your face doesn't need to do yoga for you today. <laughs> we'll stay for about three more breaths, and you really bring the stretch here. So the more you pull your left knee towards you and push your right knee away, the more you're starting to activate these muscles around your right hip. And of course, if you just can't be bothered today, then don't worry about it. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll take one more breath in. And then exhale, release. If your left foot was up, let it go back down again. And now take your right knee and we're gonna cross it directly over our left thigh, like we're sitting fancy at a desk. Whew, little bugs. Okay, and then from here, you're going to lift both legs off of the mat, and then you probably will need to lift your body, your torso, off of the yoga mat to reach for the outer edges of your feet. And if you can't grab your feet, just grabbing the outsides of your shins is totally fine. And once you've latched on, then relax your head and your shoulders back down to the mat. Okay, so your right leg is crossed over your left leg. And now kick both legs up to the sky. And then at the same time, can you pull down on your feet with your arms? So once again, we're resisting ourselves. So we're kicking our feet up, but our hands are like, no, you stay down. So this is what's going to bring the very big stretch into your right hip now. And if you know Gomukhasana or cow face pose, this is the same deal. It's just we're on our backs instead of on our bum. All right, this is a big pose, so give it one more breath. Exhale, let it out. <sighs> nice. Release the grip, unravel your legs, and then squeeze your knees into your body. Give yourself a little wiggle. Beautiful. All right, when you're ready, other side. Let your right foot flatten down to the earth and extend your left foot to the sky. 
Again, the most important thing here is to activate your foot. So spread your toes and point them towards your nose and at the same time, press the heel of the foot away from you. There's dog fur just everywhere. <laughs> and then rotate your left foot 45 degrees to the left. Press your ankle over your right knee and then gently press your left knee away. And if this is enough for you, you're welcome to stay or you can float that right leg off of the mat and interlace your hands behind your right knee. Keep your left foot active as you draw your right knee towards your body and push your left knee away. Nice. And if you're not using your elbow, you might even notice here that to push that left knee away, you're already using these muscles in your leg. So a little extra something, something. Let your face be relaxed. Try not to clench your jaw or scrunch your shoulders towards your ears. Your legs are working for you here, but nothing else. Let it chill. Deep breath in. Long breath out. Nice. Okay, from here, if you've got your right foot floating, release it back down towards the mat. Now press your left knee over the right, like you're sitting in a fancy chair. Pick your feet up off of the floor and then reach for the outer edges of your feet or your shins and then relax your head and shoulders back down on the mat. Beautiful. Start to kick your legs up to the sky. This time we've got our left leg on top. And then as you kick your legs up, pull them back down using your arms. So both actions are happening at the same time. And you really should feel this one deep into your left booty. Ooh, it's a biggie. <laughs> Try to breathe. Try to think of some terrible joke, probably that I've told. Make you smile. <laughs> Full breaths into your nose. Maybe out through your mouth. It helps. <sighs> One more. Let it go. <sighs> nice. Unravel your legs. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Oh, thank goodness that's over. And then take your hands behind your knees and we're going to rock and roll a couple of times up and down along the mat until we come up into a little seat. Okay, so from here we want to grab that blanket or towel that we've got lying around. And what we want to do is make our blanket quite long. So we're simply using it to just make our knees not feel so uh, owy here. So I've, I've made quite a long fold with my blanket and I'm gonna cross it over the center of my yoga mat. So I've made like a red cross symbol with my yoga stuff. And from here we're coming into froggy pose. And before I do this on my mat, I can show you front on sort of what it looks like. So essentially, this will be of course in the other direction, but we're going to take our knees at least mat width distance apart and then you want to take your feet out to the side and you can see my feet i look like total frog so this is where this name comes from so your knees and ankles are in line and then your feet out to the sides all right so either you've done that already or i will catch up with you so come onto all fours on your yoga mat and then like i said take your knees at least mat width distance and then flex your feet out to the sides. And if you've got more space to go wider, then go for it. I'm gonna slide myself back a little. Yeah, if you've got more space to go wider, go for it, but know that this pose is like quite intense. So just be gentle. All right, and if this is already enough, you're welcome to stay or come down to your forearms. And you might already be thinking, huh, this is not so intense just yet. All right. You ready? This is you. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, start to send your tailbone towards the heels of your feet until you feel it. Ooh! <laughs> yeah? So when you hit that spot, and you very much will, <laughs> that's where we're going to stay in our little froggy pose. I like to kind of mash potato, mash potato my hands. It's for the Wiggles fans out there. So I can rest my forehead down. If you have any other options, 
If your dog is playing along with you and you can use your dog as a pillow, go ahead. We're simply gonna breathe here for longer than you wanna be here. So close down the eyes, try not to give up unless of course you're experiencing like electrical pain, pain that is really, really unbearable. But stretchy pain, well, that's the kind of bad in a good way, you know? Ooh, let's breathe together. Take a deep breath in. Exhale through your nose. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, two. Let it go. Inhale, one. Exhale fully. And then very gently and very slowly start to bring yourself back up onto your hands. Tuck your toes and then shift your knees ugh, back to about hips width apart and then simply sit back onto your heels. Oh yeah. You can give yourself a little kitty cat massage of your hip creases, your thighs. How you doing? Do you all hate me now? Sorry. <laughs> all right. And then from there, we're going to go into what is one of my most hated poses. It's not frog. <laughs> it's wide-legged forward fold. And I'll explain why I don't like it in a second. So using your blanket, try and get this baby as thick as possible. I have a kind of smooshy blanket, so it's not great for this. But try and get your blanket as thick as possible. And before we come into the pose, I just want to show you how to sit on the blanket. And that sounds kind of weird, but it's a thing. So if I just sit directly on top of my blanket, sure, I'm sitting up kind of tall, my spine is sort of straight, and my pelvis is neutral. But what we want to do when we fold forward is we want our pelvic bones to tilt forward. So when we're flat on our butt, it's much harder for us to reach forward. And what can tend to happen is this, we start to round through our spine. So instead of sitting directly on your blanket, start to roll your butt off of your blanket. And you can see here straight away, my pelvis is tilted. My spine's got this kind of nice neutral curve to it. And it's much easier to fold forward with a long neutral spine. So that's what we wanna do. So grab your blankie. Take it directly under your bum and then roll off of it. Sweet. So you feel that pelvic tilt forward. And then from here, send your legs just like 70% of their preferred distance. So here we are in our little wide-legged shape. Now, for a very, very, very long time, for many, many years, I sat here with my hands directly behind me, praying to whatever was listening <laughs> that it was going to be over soon. And this is a happy place to be. So if you're like me, simply take your hands behind your bum, try and sit up as tall as you can, and flex your toes. So again, we want to activate these feet so that it, all of our leg muscles are like, they're on. And if you're here, then simply close down your eyes, breathe really deep. It's nice to have the shape with a long spine. So this is a happy place for you to be. If you know you've got a little more in you today, then you're welcome to walk your hands forward. Keep those toes flexed and just kind of spy the, your fingers forward for as far as they want to go. And here, like in all forward folds, I find if you can see the floor, you're very much desperate to get down there and you start to lose the action of the pose. You start to round your spine. And what we want to do here is stretch our inner thigh muscles, our adductor muscles. So as long as you're keeping your chest nice and open and your spine nice and long and your toes flexed, this is where we want to be feeling it, not in our low back. So the best way to avoid wanting to come to the floor is just don't look at it. Close down your eyes. Don't look at the floor. Don't let that ego who sometimes is really not so helpful for us actually a lot of the time not helpful for us don't let your ego lead the way see if you can resist 
And with your eyes closed, you will focus on the breath and using the breath to guide us into the shape. So as you inhale, reach your sternum forward, your chest plate forward. And then as you exhale, draw your belly in and maybe you hinge a little deeper from your hips. And maybe just thinking about hinging a little deeper is enough. You don't even have to do it, but you start to feel these actions in your legs. So again, inhale, find space through the front of your body. Exhale, hinging from your hips or thinking about hinging from your hips. We'll be here for a few breaths longer. It's another pose that you definitely wanna have over before it's finished. Maybe not everyone, like some people definitely love this pose. I am not one of those people. <laughs> All right, let's take one more breath in here. And out. If you're folded, slowly start to walk your fingertips back in. Take your hands behind your knees, bend your knees and plant your feet flat in front of you. And here we're simply just gonna windshield wiper very slowly our knees from one side to the other. Ooh. Beautiful. And then when you're done, you can stay up on your cushion. Now you can sit on it flat and come into a comfortable cross-legged seat of your choice. Nice. I hope that you feel like you've created lots of space in your inner thigh muscles. These are big muscles, so make sure you drink some water after this. And I hope that you didn't let your ego get in the way of your practice today. I'm sure you didn't. From here, take your hands together in front of your heart. Take a full breath in. And exhale to bow your chin to your chest. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.